hey, we're going to replace a sump pump today. And it's a really easy job, so don't spend $300 or more on a plumber. Uh, just watch this video and you've conquered your fears of that creepy pit. Uh, basically, it's just a hole in the, uh, in the uh, foundation that leads to the ground. So it's dirt and rocks and whatever else is normally in the ground. So not so scary. Of, co of course, your pump probably blew up and leaked oil everywhere like mine and uh, that's why you're replacing it so it could be a little grimy but uh, I wear gloves and okay so uh, what you need is a 6-in-1 screwdriver and a channel lock and you could have guessed that because those are the two most common tools you'll ever need uh, let me take just a second to extol the benefits of a 6-in-1 you have a Phillips on either end, smaller one and a bigger one, and then if you flip this piece around, a flat head on either side, and then that, that makes four, and, and the ones that kind of seem like a cheap way to say six is these uh, hex chucks, but believe it or not, they're really useful, and they, they we're going to use it in a second, and it fits right over the screw head, instead of using this little slot that slides around and, and doesn't really stay in place. So we're going to be using that uh, to remove the Fernco coupling on this pump. Now hopefully you have one of these because it's the easiest way and plumbers are more or less supposed to install something like this. We have an old-fashioned style tubing here and it's a slightly different size than PVC. So the Fernco is kind of you know, gets a little bigger here and clamp it on and it works. So all we have to do is take that off at this point. Uh, before I do that, I want to run the pump one last time to get as much water out as possible. So I'll just lift up on the floater and I'm going to block the screen so I don't splash it. Okay. Wonderful. And I have a cut off t-shirt today. Okay, at that point, unplug unplug the pump so it doesn't start running when we're taking this off. And uh, one thing to notice is when I remove this, we're going to have a lot... Alright, let me just re uh, loosen this clamp. And when I pull this off, there's going to be a lot of water spraying out. So I'm going to block the screen again. All right. So all that water is water that was standing in the horizontal stretch of the pipe before it gets out to the street. And all that water would flow right back into your pump if you didn't have a check valve. And what a check valve is, lifting the pump right out, is this device here. Now, you gotta have one of these. So if you don't have one, first thing you gotta do is go buy one. And uh, at this point, it's pretty simple to check and make sure it's working right. So go ahead and check that. Um, because what happens is there's a little flap, and it's supposed to flap up to let the water come up the pipe, but then it flaps down and stops dead so that water can't flow back down the way you just saw it pouring out. And if you let all the water come back down, you'd be pumping way more frequently than needed and really overworking your pump and burning it out at an early age. So you definitely want to have a working check valve installed in line, preferably really close to the pump. All right. So, and that's also another place where you can remove the pump from. If you didn't have a union there, you can just unscrew these and pull it out. Uh, and if there's absolutely no way that you can see to take the pump out, go ahead and cut the PVC. It, it's not scary stuff. You can glue it together with the uh, purple primer and, and the glue. And you can thread things together. You can, it's cheap, you know, you can cut it easily with a hacksaw or a sawzall. So you can really have fun. It's like building. So don't be afraid of this stuff. Now I'm going to unscrew it from the base of the pump. 
of course, with the channel lock to get get me started, and then by hand. Now you should check this out if you can before you buy your your pump because there's different types of connections you might have. This is the most common: the inch and a half male threaded PVC. You can see that there. Uh, you could possibly have a female which would be going in instead, um, but you can always work with it. Again, it, it's it's kind of like a puzzle. It's fun, and it, anyone can really do it. It just it's just a matter of how many trips you end up making to the hardware store. Okay, so I'll set this old pump aside and bring in the new one, which looks a lot better and hopefully will last a little longer. Okay. Now, luckily, I have the same connection type, and it looks like it's about the same height off the ground, so everything should work as is. But again, it's not really that hard to modify things. So you don't need anything uh, special, like any kind of compounds to put around the threads. That's really unnecessary at this point. Um, one thing I really want to point out is that you should have a little hole drilled, about about an eighth inch or a three sixteenths hole drilled at the bottom of this standpipe. And I have it on here somewhere. It might come around with the next rotation. Yeah. Okay, here it is. If you can see it, that hole in the pipe. Uh, I don't really have enough hand right there. That's um, to prevent air locking, which is kind of a mysterious thing. Some, some uh, fairly, fairly uh, well-educated handyman or plumbers will say you don't need it. Some will say you absolutely need it. Uh, and I get different explanations on, on what it's actually for. Now, air lock. In the instruction manual, all it says is, drill this hole to prevent airlock. Now, who, who knows what airlock is? I know that airlock is a totally awesome uh, electronic band. But um, I think the theory is that when water is rushing in really fast, like during a heavy storm, you can kick up some air into the bottom of the pump. And if, the air, if there's an air pocket around the propeller, and it'll just keep spinning until the cows come home and no water will get moved and uh, you'll blow your pump. Another theory is if there's a small hole um, then at least water can move in the in the rare event that your your pipe might get blocked up maybe with roots outside so at least you know there's there's some place for the water to escape and you won't blow your pump that way uh, so you know different theories but definitely drill it because <laughs> for no other reason, the instruction manual tells you to. Okay, uh, this floater can move around and things can shift around depending on how your hole <laughs> is configured and, and where the pump is coming out of the, where the pipe is coming out of the wall. But I can basically drop it in. And uh, notice it's a little higher than my original. So, what's down here? Nothing. Uh, there's a flat piece of <laughs> rock, which is quite likely. Sometimes they put them down there. I have different bricks here for different things. So, uh, that'll probably save me a bunch of effort. So just reach into that hole, even if you can't see anything. It might save you a lot of hassle. Okay, and I'll just fit that in. And a little more trouble here than anticipated. All right. Now, you can basically, I'm not going to make you watch the rest of this. I'm just going to tighten this up.